Welcome guys, welcome back to Minkwish Corner once again. Today we're back with uh, my other, um, my history reaction. You know, I did a reaction uh, earlier uh, this morning um, on wrestling. Unfortunately, it was blocked in some countries. So if, you, if you're if you not able to see it, sorry about that. Uh, I was able to fix my problem with my computer. My graphics card was having issues. I fixed that, knock on wood. You know, uh, I hope you like my uh, my reaction. Today we're reacting to the loss of life in the First World War, visualized. I, I've watched the Second World War. I think I've watched the first one as well. So that's disclaimer, okay? Uh, if I don't overreact or anything. Eh. But I'm curious to see, like, visually how much each nation lost. Let's go on. Skillshare for free for two months at skl.sh slash real life lore 18. Okay, okay. From now, on the 11th of November, will mark exactly 100 years since the end of the First World Time War, flies, one of the most destructive and violent wars ever fought in human history. Yeah. While the Second World War and the destruction it caused often overshadow the First World War, I felt like now would be a good time to remember and visualize the enormous loss of life that the Great War caused. We'll be Are counting we... soldiers and civilians separately, as well as deaths and injuries separately. A casualty can be a confusing statistic in war, because it means that a soldier has been taken out of action, but not necessarily killed. Yeah. Each of these models represents 1,000 people who died or went missing, <laughs> while each of next these models <laughs> represents 1,000 people who were injured, which when combined equal That's the number funny. of casualties. And we'll begin the counting with That's the United all. States. You put Over 116,000 <laughs> soldiers died. And another States. Over 116,000 soldiers died, and another. I mean, they ended the war. Yeah, you know, they uh, they joined the war at the end. So I'm not gonna talk shit. 116k. You know, that's one battle on the western front. Fighting against the Germans and Austrians on the western front. This amounted to 0.17% of the American population at the time, mm -hmm. becoming a casualty of war. But America only fought for a little over a year yeah. between 1917 and 1918. The war had already been going on for over two and a half years before that. So let's take a look at some of the countries parade, we're fighting man. from the beginning. You know, the war began the way, when Austria... I have a question. Why doesn't the United States have parades? Like military Russian parades, you know? Like, why not? I don't know, it looks cool. You know, you throw a few tanks, you know, a little bit of plane. Hungary declared war against Serbia in 1914. I love that flag, Serbia though. Suffered worse the Austro Hungarian than any flag. Other country during the war. Yeah, they suffered the most. 75,000 Serb soldiers lost their lives in the fighting, while mm -hmm. another 625,000 civilians died from famine and disease. That Jesus amounted to Christ. over 22% of the Serbian yeah, the Serbs lost dying the most people, during the uh, four per... year long war. More than one out of every five people in the country. Serbia was a member of one of the two alliances alliances that fought against one another in the war. What did Serbia get at the end of the First World War? I mean, like, did they get territory? Ah. ...called the Entente, which yeah. also included the United Kingdom, France, Russia, Italy, America, and many others, all of whom would suffer terribly. The United Kingdom would send over 815,000 soldiers to their graves, oh, like on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, in which 19,000 would die in only 24 hours, the bloodiest single day in British history. Over 123,000 British- You know what's been crazy? There's another battle in, in English history where um, uh, England lost 28,000 soldiers it was the bloodiest day in english history it was the battle of toe town uh the war of the roses between edward the fourth and margaret of anjou uh 28 000 people died on that battle i mean on both sides combined so you know the bloodiest battle the British civilians also lost their lives during the war, totaling up to just over 2% of the British population, or about 1 in every 50 people dying. Yeah. But many more were wounded. 1,675,000 more soldiers, which adds together to 5.77% of the UK population then, becoming casualties of the war. Subjects of the British Empire, like Australia, Canada, New Zealand, India, and South Africa also fought in the war and took high casualties. Mm. Percentage-wise, New Zealand suffered the worst, losing 3.8% of her population as wartime casualties. While numbers-wise, Australia took the hardest hit, losing over 61,000 
1,000 of her soldiers and suffering another 152,000 wounded, with mm. Canada and India both not too far behind. But the other major Entente powers lost an incredible amount Here we of go. war. The Here Italians we go. joined the war in 1915, but in three years... He's skipping the, you know, the big ones for the for last. ...years of fighting suffered 555,000 military fatalities, oh. along with 592,000 civilian deaths. Another mm. 947,000 Italian soldiers became wounded, representing 5.8% of the Italian population becoming casualties, so a million figure died. roughly comparable to the UK percentage. But then there's Russia and well, France, here we come. both of here whom we suffered go. higher casualties than go. the entire Serbian population combined during the war. Yeah. Russia was the first country to come to Serbia's defense during the war and suffered catastrophic losses. One million. You know, one of the reasons. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think one of the reasons why Russia and Serbia still have a very good relations to this day is because of this. Because Russia went to their aid in their time of need. You know, they lost. We're gonna see how much. Nine hundred seventy-seven thousand soldiers died fighting against the Central Powers, while another one million one hundred forty thousand civilians lost <clears throat> their lives. Okay, so two million died from the Russians. That, I think, that's one of the reasons why Serbia hasn't joined the EU yet. You know, why they're still like this with Russia. From what I've heard, tell me if I'm wrong, but this carries a lot of weight politically speaking. You know, like we lost two million people. To save you guys. You know, that creates bonds, man. That's. But Russia suffered vastly higher injuries. 4,350,000 soldiers were wounded during the fighting, which together represents 2.5% of the Russian population that became casualties. These enormous losses eventually helped contribute to Russia's spiral into revolution and their surrender in the war early into 1917. But percentage-wise, yeah. the allied country that suffered during the war the most, besides Serbia, was France. Most I of the Western that. Front took place in northeastern France and Belgium and during four Here we go. years Here we go. of fighting, 1,377,000 French soldiers gave up their lives in defense okay. of their country, along with 340,000 civilian fatalities. So 1. This 4 represented a loss of life for 4.3 per... 1.4 million. That's a lot. That's a lot. You know, when you compare the deaths... Uh, France suffered like 90,000 casualties in the Second World War. They were lucky in that regard, uh, but they lost 1.4 here. Uh, yeah, it's sad, man. I mean, it's 1.4. I mean, when you see photos from the Second World War, and you know the casualties are so much higher. Uh, but at least I don't know. Maybe it's just the way it looks. But the First World War, just there was this heaviness of death. I mean. The trenches, the the, the 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 sewage water, and the rats, and the the, the, the trench foot, and it just the whole atmosphere screamed horrible, you know. Whereas the Second World War, I mean, it was equally bad. It was way worse in terms of casualties, especially on the Eastern Front. But I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that the Western part of the countries, uh, you know, the West, uh, didn't suffer as much. They 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 ended up being better off. In the Second World War than in the First one. Tell me if I'm wrong. ...percent of the entire French population, but many, many more were wounded. 4,266,000 additional French soldiers were wounded or maimed by the war. Repres you know what were the best place if you're French in the First World War is? Corsica. If you're in Corsica, the Italians are your friends. I mean, you have to worry about maybe, you know, Presenting a total the casualty Ottomans amount similar come. to Russia's, but from a much smaller population. Yeah. In total, around 15% of France's population became a casualty during the First World War. Ouch. A horrible loss of life that wouldn't be fully recovered 20 years later at Are the start of the Second the World War? War. Other Entente countries in order of wartime casualties include Romania, which also suffered terribly at 10.4% yeah. I mean, of their population yeah. becoming casualties, yeah. as well as Greece, Belgium, Portugal, Montenegro, and Japan, with only about 1,000 casualties during the entire war. But now let's take a look at the other side, the Central Powers, which Here were led we by Germany. Here Germany was fighting on two fronts for most of the war and also suffered cataclysmic losses. 2,037,000 of her soldiers died fighting in the West and the East, and 594,000 of her civilians died largely due to starvation caused by the... 2.6 mil. 
2.6 million. Jesus Christ. That was a horrible time for the Germans, man, the 20th century. Horrible. Because they created their nation in 1871. You know, they're like, we're the German Empire. And then they lose 2.6 mil in 1914, 1918. And then they lose 8 mil in 1939, 1945. I mean, it's insane casualties. And their whole country, I mean, they had so much territory in the beginning of the century. And by the 1950s, you know, you see maps, you compare the size of Germany, what it was, to what it is now, it's pathetic. You know, it is pathetic. The Allied blockade of the country. Another 2.5 million German soldiers were wounded during the course of the war, amounting to 7.8% of Germany's population becoming a casualty. While Germany suffered the highest raw numbers of the Central Powers casualties, she didn't suffer the highest percentage-wise. While Austria-Hungary took less casualties overall, they represented a higher proportion of that empire's population, 10.77%. Over yeah. 1.3 million soldiers were killed and another 3.6 million injured. <laughs> All of which helps to explain why the Austro-Hungarian Empire itself wasn't able to survive the war. But the yeah, worst suffering on the lot. Central Power side occurred inside of the Ottoman Empire, and most of it was self-inflicted. The Ottomans joined the war oh, in 1915. Oh my god, this is gonna count the Armenians, right? That's a sad, sad part of Ottoman history. And suffered 548,000 military fatalities, and another 582,000 wounded fighting against mostly the British, French, and the Russians. Here we come, here we but go. absurdly high civilian deaths yeah. inside of the Ottoman Empire were largely due to the Ottoman government's policy of ethnic cleansing against her Armenian, Greek, and Assyrian ethnic minorities. Collectively oh, known as the Armenian Genocide, 1.5 million Armenians were systematically killed by the Ottoman government during and shortly after the war, along with 600,000 Greeks and 225,000 Assyrians. So, 2.3, 2.4 million. I wonder why people don't talk about this massacre or this genocide as much. Is it because it happened so long ago, you know, 100 years ago, compared to the, to the pogrom of the Jews? I don't know. Was it because propaganda? Because this genocide is that horrific, but nobody talks about. It. Yeah, the, 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 the Turkish didn't even recognize it happened until about like a few years ago, months ago. I don't know. It was very, very uh, recent where they acknowledged, you know, that it happened. You know, and nobody talks about. It. Uh, you know, like the Jewish was much more people. You know. Six million, it's horrific. But I don't know. You know, if uh, I'm not getting into this, this is fucking minefield. Here. Accounting for all of this, in addition to the military casualties, an enormous 17% of the Ottoman Empire's population was killed or wounded during the conflict, which can also help to explain why this empire too didn't survive long after the war was over. And finally, mm. Bulgaria was another yeah. member of this alliance that suffered greatly as well, with 6.8% of their population becoming casualty victims of the Great War. In total and across all countries, about 9 million soldiers lost their lives, as well as 7 million civilians. 36% of all deaths were Entente military, 22% were the Central Powers military, another 22% were Central Powers civilians, and the final 20% were Entente civilians. The First World War was and still remains the bloodiest war ever fought in the history of the United Kingdom, France, Italy, Belgium, Bulgaria, Romania, Serbia, Turkey, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. The yeah. Second World War was actually not as bad. Yeah, the Second World War was very mild on the Western Front. Uh, all things considered, you know, when it, uh, you know, I end up saying mild, you know, hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives. Millions when he put all the countries together. But overall, it was very, you know, there weren't that many casualties number one and number two i don't know how much uh, the infrastructure suffered with the retaking of paris or france and subsequent countries uh did they suffer infrastructurally or were they sort of preserved uh, i know that germany was bombed to the ground horribly uh, 
You know, it is what it is. They didn't surrender to the war and all that. Bad for all of these mentioned countries, but it would be worse for others like Russia and Germany. Yeah. Hopefully, after two terrible lessons during the 20th century, humanity will never forget what can nah. happen when we let our differences get the nah, better. we have to complete the trilogy, you know? We're humans, you know? Number one, number two, they need to work out. Third stone, third stone the charm, you know? We're coming up. Round three is coming. We're coming, guys. Care of us. Don't Lessons worry. of any kind are valuable for both societies and for individuals. Yeah, we and forget that. All the way through this video to here, it's clear that you enjoy learning. So why not? Yeah. Uh, great video. Great video. Go subscribe to the channel or mine. You know, I'm taking what I can get. Uh, but overall, yeah. I mean, no, we're coming for a third world war. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong here, because you know a lot of people speculate that a third world war is unlikely because all of the economies are so intertwined well that's what they thought in the first world war that not only were all the economies intertwined number one but because you know we were so um we were so uh the 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 the, the, the awards the rewards of a war didn't uh they, they were not enough the price to be paid and I don't know I think we're going for a third of all anyways I've talked enough sorry guys uh, if you like my reaction leave a like subscribe I'll see you guys next time see ya